Today's video is sponsored by Morning Brew. In the previous video, we examined the diversity of bony fish, and how their unique calcified skeletons and swim bladders allow them to adapt in many ways to life in the oceans. But in place of bone, many fish instead build their skeletons using cartilage, a tough, flexible tissue that helps a great deal with buoyancy. It is lightweight, and thus much more buoyant than bones. So, unlike bony fish, cartilaginous fish do not need swim bladders to maintain neutral buoyancy. Two major classes of fish build their skeletons out of cartilage. The jawless fish, or agnatha, and the chondrichthys. Let's take a look at the fascinating features that set these different groups apart from one another, as we dive down once again into the world of deep sea fish. Slithering their way through the water, members of the class Agnatha, a word with origins in Greek meaning without jaws, are unlike any other group of fish. Though they resemble eels with their long, wriggling, writhing bodies, the lack of biting jaws makes them distinct from any other known vertebrates. In place of jaws, the two main species of jawless fish, the hagfish and the lamprey, have sucker-like mouths. In hagfish, two teeth-covered dental plates make them well-suited to a life of scavenging in the deep. 5,000 meters beneath the ocean surface, they traverse the seafloor sediments in search of dead fish. Better yet, the decaying corpse of a sunken whale. Using their dental plates, they burrow deep into the carcass, or bite off chunks of food. While they eat, they can be observed twisting their bodies into a knot, then passing the knot along their body and forcing it against the carcass to increase the force of their bites. This allows them to tear flesh from even the toughest of meals. The mouth of a lamprey is quite different to that of a hagfish. In place of dental plates, their oral disc presents sharp conical teeth arranged in consecutive circular rows. These allow the lamprey to attach themselves to other fish, and suck on their blood and body fluids, leaving rounded scars on the fish. Once they've had their fill, they detach themselves and swim away. The fact that they can feed from other animals without killing them means that lamprey are a form of parasite favouring a number of prey animals, including salmon, sharks, and occasionally even whales and dolphins. The evolutionary history of jawless fish shows that they represent the earliest forms of vertebrates having evolved before any others. And although they contain cartilage, 
they are not classified among true cartilaginous fish due to the lack of a jaw. In fact, the Agnatha class is one of three major classes of fish. The other two are the Osteichthys, or bony fish, which we looked at exclusively in part one of this film. The third class, which we're about to explore, are the true cartilaginous fish, called the chondrichthys. Chondrichthys are further divided into two subclasses, one containing sharks and rays, and the other the fascinating deep sea chimera. By far the most distinctive subclass of cartilaginous fish is that which contains the sharks and rays. They are known as elasmobranchs and are characterized by the presence of rigid dorsal fins and bodies covered with teeth-like scales called dermal denticles that decrease drag and turbulence, allowing the shark or ray to swim faster and more quietly. It is this adaptation that allows species like great white sharks to be stealthy hunters, attacking unsuspecting prey from beneath by breaching out of the water. However, the feeding behaviours of sharks are far more diverse than just violent attacks. Let's take a look at a few notable examples. The cookie cutter shark latches onto prey and twists its body from side to side, using its blade-like teeth to scoop out chunks of flesh. At depths of more than a kilometre, or 3,280 feet, the elusive goblin shark has a flabby body and a large liver to allow it to remain buoyant in very deep water. When prey is just out of reach, the shark uses elastic tissue to extend its mouth to grab it. Surprisingly, some of the largest shark species are filter feeders. At night, the megamouth shark rises out of the depths to prey on zooplankton near the surface. It does this by dropping its lower jaw, widening its mouth, and raising its snout as it swims along to sieve a huge volume of water through its gigantic gills. Some sharks rely almost entirely on dead matter rather than hunting prey. This is particularly true in the deep sea, where food is scarce. While makos and great whites rely on speed and agility to hunt down fast-moving prey, sharks here must be opportunistic and depend largely on carrion. At sunken whale corpses, one species, the Greenland shark, uses its serrated teeth as knives to saw and tear away at the flesh. As it resides in the pitch black depths of the ocean, the Greenland shark has no need for eyesight, and is therefore blind. Instead, their sense of smell is phenomenal. Experiments have shown that some sharks can detect blood at concentrations of one part per million. For this reason, scavenger sharks may be drawn from miles around by the scent of blood and decay that emanates from sunken carrion.
closely related to sharks are the rays and skates. These are fellow elasmobranchs, but with distinctive body forms like disc-shaped flattened bodies, large pectoral fins which they flap like wings to propel themselves forward. Characteristics that result from ancient sharks adapting to life near the bottom, leading to the evolution of their flattened, specialised descendants. Their unique features allow rays to inhabit very different habitats to the sharks that rule the open ocean. Many rays have instead conquered the seabed, being able to bury themselves in the sediment for protection and feed on benthic invertebrates without clogging up their gills. The evolutionary history of cartilaginous fish possibly dates back to the late Ordovician period, 450 million years ago. In the time that followed, primitive sharks evolved in a number of ways, with some becoming modern sharks and rays. But one group of cartilaginous fish diverged 420 million years ago to become the alien-looking chimera relatives of true sharks, but belonging now to a different classification, the holocephali. Hidden away in the depths, the chimeras, or ghost sharks, endure as their only living examples of the class holocephali. Their appearance alone demonstrates why they are not classified as true sharks. They are a rather peculiar group of fish with bulbous heads, large eyes for absorbing the limited light present in the deep sea, and a ghostly appearance that resembles a patchwork creature made from bits and pieces of different animals. The trunk of an elephant, the wings of a bird, and a head that resembles that of a rabbit. It is not only the morphology of chimeras that sets them apart from sharks and rays, for they also behave in peculiar ways. Unlike many true sharks, they do not roam the oceans in search of prey. And unlike rays, they do not burrow down into sea floor sediments. Instead, they live near but not on the seabed, a lifestyle known as pelagiobenthic. Some probe through the mud with long curved snouts to dig up prey. Others swim along and sense prey ahead of them in the gloom, using electrical receptors that cover their snouts tiny holes, called ampullae of Lorenzini. These are found in many cartilaginous fish, but the deep-sea lifestyle of chimeras makes them especially important to these species. Essentially, they allow them to see in the dark and uncover hidden prey. The jawless and cartilaginous classes of fish demonstrate the extent of the diversity of marine fish. The range of ecosystems and available niches in the oceans has enabled these fish to diverge into countless different species, each exhibiting unique adaptations, surprising behaviours and specialised morphologies that allow them to play different roles. Sharks, for example, are an integral part of any marine ecosystem, since they are often the top predators, keeping populations of other species in check. Jawless fish like hagfish 
recycle nutrients from carrion back into the deep sea food web, while rays make the most of the sea floor ecosystem and its abundant opportunities. But together, cartilaginous fish, jawless fish, and the very different bony fish are able to occupy every marine ecosystem, take part in nearly all trophic levels, and make up the most diverse and abundant vertebrate group on the planet. Today's video is sponsored by Morning Brew, a free daily newsletter that fills you in on the latest business news in just five minutes. Before subscribing to Morning Brew, my mornings left very little time for catching up on the news before heading off to lectures at university. But now, with Morning Brew's witty and informative articles that are quick to read and easy to digest, I can make sure I'm all caught up without having to waste time trawling through the dry, often boring articles of traditional news sites. For example, in just five minutes, I got all the details of Blue Origin's plans to launch a private space station in the hopes of making space accessible to researchers and tourists, and I still had time to tackle the puzzle section too. The best part is, it's completely free, and takes just 15 seconds to subscribe. So, if you're interested in business, finance, or tech, click the link in the description below to subscribe to Morning Brew today.